minister who serves the congregations of the Unitarian Universalists of the Chester River and the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship at Easton. To all of our members and friends of these two amazing congregations, welcome. It's good to connect with you today. I know I may miss being with you in person. I wish that were the way we could gather. But I can tell you that I literally feel the connections among us today. I can feel your care. I can feel your care for one another in these unexpected and uncertain times. Welcome. And to any visitors who have found us online or visitors who occasionally attend our congregations, it's wonderful to have you here too as we experiment with our first virtual service. We are learning to gather in alter alternate ways in light of the coronavirus. We're using technology, and we're recording the service, so it's different. Yet the purpose of weekly worship isn't different. The reason we get together on Sundays every week is to take time out from our day-to-day -day schedules and to sit back and reflect to think about the world in its larger view, to think about the ways that we adapt and the meaning of all that is around us. As with anything new, this is an experiment. This isn't going to be perfect today, but we're going to give it a try. And I have deep gratitude for my husband, Bill, who is our entire tech crew this morning. Thank you. I invite you now, wherever you are watching, to take in a deep breath, let it out, take in another breath, be patient, let it out. Find that place of centering for this service, the place that you need to center on today for this week, for this unprecedented time. We are a faith tradition that lives into our values of inclusion. That has not changed. We are a faith tradition that welcomes your questions. That has not changed. We are a faith tradition that invites you to bring forward your full identity, your joys, your sorrows, your openness to what is all around you in community. That has not changed. But we are faced with changes in how we are connected. That goal, the goal hasn't changed, but it will take many forms and formats over these next weeks. So as we light our chalice, we bring all of that with us today. When we light our chalice, we are remembered that we won't gather exactly this way, and that's true for our virtual services. This is the time that we're going to have this service, and click by click as you join, and listen in whatever ways you are listening, you are part of our community this morning. So our words for lighting our chalice this morning, we light this chalice as a symbol of the light within all creation. We light this chalice for truth. May the search for truth be with us always. We light this chalice for love. May the love for others be strong in our hearts. Maybe 
If you're someone who lives in a community that has cottages and apartments and you're used to being in the dining room to share your meals, I'm thinking here particularly of Londonderry or Heron Point, maybe you folks have had to change and they're delivering food at your door. What has changed for you? I do know there are a lot of answers that are out there. Our lives have changed quickly as we really work hard not to spread germs. We do that to keep ourselves healthy and we do that to keep our friends healthy and it's important. And one of the words we use when you have a really big change that happens unexpectedly is disruption. Disruption means that things were going along one way and then they change. One of the stories I was thinking about as I thought about this is the itsy bitsy spider. Think about the itsy bitsy spider and for everybody here, whether you're watching in your pajamas or you're, you're watching it at night, whenever you're watching this recording, go back, see if we can all do this together. I'm not going to say it, we're just going to say it. So the itsy bitsy spider goes up the water spout and down comes the rain and washes the spider out. Out comes the sun, it dries up all the rain, and the itsy bitsy spider goes up the spout again. Can you imagine being that spider? You're just going about your business, you're just doing spider things, you're crawling around outside being curious, and all of a sudden you try to climb up the pipe on the side of a house. That's what we call drain spouts and water spouts. And all of a sudden, whoosh, here comes the rain. Spiders don't have phones. They didn't know what the weather was going to be. Can you, so you can pretty much expect that spider was surprised. And I think we've all been surprised over these last weeks. That spider's life was disrupted. So I'd ask you to think about all those plans we talked about that had changed this week. Are you sad about how any of the changes have affected you, the things that have been canceled, the different ways your life's changed? I know I like to play cards with my friends once a month. I have three other friends and we get together and we laugh and we just have a good time and we had to cancel that this week because we didn't want to spread germs between ourselves and it was sad to do that. Not a huge deal, but a place I was sad. I've also, I've also wondered, is there any place you've been happy or you've gotten to do something different this past week that you wouldn't have gotten to do? What are the things that have made you happy? Because sometimes disruption makes time for other things. Sometimes we're surprised about that. The one thing we do know about disruption is there are lots of feelings. Maybe you'd be sad, maybe you'd be curious or happy or just confused. And the other thing we know about disruption is it helps to tell people how we're feeling. If you're one of our younger learners, maybe you tell your parents, but everybody, if we think about how we share our feelings, if we stay connected to one another, it helps us figure out disruption because usually it is a surprise and we don't quite understand what's gone on. And even while we're going to have church by computer, you can check in with Ms. Liz or Ms. Connie or Ms. Pat and let them know how you're doing. Send me an email, send me a picture, all sorts of ways we can stay connected. And I'd love to hear from everyone as they figure out what it's like when life is disrupted. And I ask us all to remember that spider, that spider who the rain came, but then the sun came out again. And that is our Thoughts for All Ages for today. I'm going to invite us now into a time of reflection, a time of prayer, Spirit of life, spirit of life, spirit of love. Be with us in this time of disruption. We come together today 
with the awareness of uncertainty around us. And this uncertainty may be with us for a while. May we all find ways to offer strength to one another. In these times, may we be honest with our feelings. In these times, may we be honest with our challenges. In these times, may we find patience. Patience as our households work through being under one roof. Patience for those who live alone in our lives when we live alone and we may be lonely. In these times, may we find creative ways to be with one another. This morning, our compassion extends to the medical professionals and first responders who are being stretched. May we hold their fears with our own. May we hold their courage with our own. May we express gratitude for the risks that they find themselves taking every day. We offer our gratitude, too, for the educators and the caregivers and those that working in the grocery stores that are finding new ways to deal with their roles in society and to keep us all moving forward. I invite you to pause here. Sense your experience, sense your worries, and sense your hopes. May we each know that we'll be on this journey with one another. Amen and blessed be. The communities in both Easton and Chester River have a tradition. They're a little different in both congregations, but, but even though they're done slightly differently, they're doing the same thing. It's the sharing of joys and sorrows in our personal lives so that we stay connected and we get to know each other in different ways. This is hard to do virtually, but we're going to go ahead and give it a try. And since I think this is going to work if I just go over to the candles, I'm going to do it there. So be patient, folks. We'll see how this works. And a couple came in by text, so I'm going to check it there. Our first joy and sorrow is from David Beal, or is, I'm sorry, is from Amy. And Amy notes that when she was giving out some lunches in Millington and was chatting with two women who were volunteering, one of them asked where she went to church. When she said she belonged to UUCR, both of them knew about us and said positive things about the work we do in community. One of the ladies who was on the Board of Education came to a few of the discussions on racism and said she'd belong to our church if she were a churchgoer. The other is a Kent County native who lives in Millington and is active at Graves Chapel. I was so happy just to hear that these two women knew about us and have positive impressions of our community. Another joy and sorrow came in from David. Working with members of UUCR, that's the Chester River Congregation, and UUFE to accomplish the goals of keeping church running, it was a truly a warm feeling to see how many people care about our communities. Just to repeat, the joy of meeting and exceeding our goals of the stewardship campaign was a joy. We are blessed with the opportunities that fates have brought us in the energy and compassion of people. He had a second joy 
that our very dear friends are finally back in Chestertown after a four-day odyssey of returning from Portugal. We have no idea what's happening in the rest of the world. This is from Anne. She notes, a joy I would share is how many people in my community, close and more distant, mostly you use, are being creative about ways to serve others. Making masks that really work was one of the topics during our walk with friends today. This is from Christina. My joy is that despite a tumultuous month of this public health crisis turning our world upside down, it has been heartwarming to see the myriad of ways in which people near and far are demonstrating the comfort of witnessing, and, and I'm witnessing the best aspects of humanity, whether it's serenading a neighbor for her, their birthday, creating sidewalk art to uplift one another, or donating construction masks that can be used by healthcare workers. There are so many awesome ways in which human hearts have helped one another continue to push through this. Thank you. So just take a moment, hold the joys and sorrows we've heard and those that you're thinking about this morning or this evening. Amen. So this is a sermon, really more of a shorter message this morning as we think about disruption. Think about disruption in the context of the world we're in right now. There's been just an abruptness in where we find ourselves today. Two weeks ago, we were holding services right in our sanctuaries, and our lives were busy with the ordinary tasks of living. We had events we were anticipating, and when I think about this, I don't want to imply that everything was all rosy. Everybody had their individual challenges, yet there was a regularity to it all. And then, like the spider, we had a swish. In a matter of days, we were shutting down society in ways that we just couldn't have anticipated. From barbershops to restaurants to schools to sports and theaters and everything else, closed. Abruptly, all this happened. And we can understand why we're watching the news. We've actually added a new phrase to our vocabulary. We've added this phrase called flatten the curve. Bill and I are math geeks, and we actually looked at those curves. For those of us who know us well, we tried to figure out what the formula would be. We did discuss they weren't parabolas, and, and the conversation went downhill from there. But we're just not used to other people staring at graphs with us. And yet that graph with the steep curve and the flattened out curve has become something that is guiding our lives. How has it been for you as this last week or so has progressed? One of the things I think that's interesting is now that some of us get social distancing, there's a lot of critiquing of others who don't, who gets it, who doesn't, and I think a bit of judgment abounds. These are important lessons to learn quickly, and as we step back, I sometimes think I need to remember my teaching voice and, and to realize it is taking a little while for all of this to sink in. There's been a lot of mixed messages. People are figuring out at different rates. But it seems to me to shut down a society in a week 
people are taking it seriously. And as this disruption came, there's not a rule book, and that's not very really comfortable for a lot of us. To the extent our phones ding, we've got them off the best we think we can, but it seems to be happening anyway. So we anyway, so we've got these rule books, and they're not working, and there's no best practices. You hear a good idea, and you think it's the rule from one day, and then it changes. That doesn't feel comfortable. And I think we need to be real. This is going to keep happening as the experts figure it out. They're doing their best, but it is confusing times. For the people that aren't experts, I just suggest not looking in that way. But for most of us, right now we're mostly at home, where we go out on a few very carefully planned excursions. How has it been for you? How have you been feeling? I do sense, as I talk during the story for all ages, that there is a sadness that comes with the cancellation of so many events being canceled, have so many cancellations happening. I invite us to really make sense, space for that sadness. Grief is a feeling that comes with that kind of loss. And part of grief is a loss of control, disappointment, anger, maybe just a sense of emptiness. It's not going to be every feeling for everybody. There's some smaller things like canceling a card game, and we move on. But some of the things are bigger. For those who are seeing some milestones that won't be recognized in the way you thought they were going to be, special birthdays and more, we all hold each other's sadness during this time. We are too, but please know that other folks are trying to stay connected in trying to be a community at this difficult time. It might be time to cry and laugh, and yes, that's all okay. There's gonna be fear of illness and risks for loved ones. And yet, when I just read through the joys and sorrows, I realized that there's also been a lot of unexpected joy, refreshed new connections, time where people are seeing each other for where they are. I know I've talked to my own brother and sister more, and when I say talk, we've actually talked on the phone, voice conversations instead of texts, and the conversations have been a little more deep. Maybe that's something you're experiencing, maybe those are some calls you'd like to make. I've been actually crafting something I'm calling my silver linings list, and I feel a little guilty sometimes for crafting it, but I am seeing there's a lot of places that in this disruption I'm learning. I'm seeing places where people are attempting new things or stepping into leadership roles and I'm getting to know people different and we're laughing as we figure out technology and YouTube channels and everything it's taking to put the service together to get day. I think we need to be honest about those possibilities too. So there's no magic advice, no wise story that I can find that's going to be a path through a, a, a pandemic. I know pandemic is sort of a scary word, but it means the germs are spreading. And then there's that secondary effect, the lost income, lost jobs, and financial security. Right now, we don't know what all of that is going to mean. And, and I want to put this as a huge and right now, the people I know have a place to stay. They have food. They have electricity and they have phones or phones and computers. That is a big blessing in confusing times. So honesty about the feelings, observations on kindness, and gratitude, I think are a path to help us. I also think as congregations, we're unique units. You may end up finding yourself connected to people as you get phone calls that you didn't really know, other than maybe across the church or across coffee hour. There may be new relationships, I expect there will be, that form. So no magic wisdom in the here's the solution part of the day. But we've been talking about wisdom this month in both congregations, and we've been reminded that wisdom almost always does, never, almost never comes in little advice nuggets. That's just not way, the way it works. 
Recall our cartoon that we showed a few weeks ago. We had Charlie Brown leaning up against a wall on his pillow reading his book, and the caption said, in the book of life, the answers aren't in the back. It doesn't work that way. But we do talk also that wisdom comes in the listening. Wisdom comes after a pause. Wisdom comes in the embodied patience it's going to take to walk through these next weeks and months. Because I think at that point, we start standing back. We stand back far enough to realize that we are not going through the uncertainty alone. And that when we stand back, the wisdom, all those ideas, all those experiences come together and we find paths we never expected might work. Because I think one of the parts of the silver lining piece is the ways we're going to be resourceful. So if we start and we lead with our kind and most generous selves, I think we'll find a path toward this uncertainty that will make sense. Our UU faith in these times reminds us that we are grounded in a theology of deep connection. We are called to respect the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. And I think it's that principle of interdependence that both reinforces the importance of social distancing. We are doing the social distancing because we care about our neighbor, because we care about the larger community. We are going to be social distancing. But I think that principle also reminds us that it is the connection to creation and one another which will also lead our way. We're going to have to do it differently. We're going to do some things virtually. But I ask us to trust that it is in that interconnection, that interdependence that we have, that we will find the light that will guide our path. We will figure out, not the big picture, but the next right steps that we need to take. It's in that principle that we have a reminder to follow love. May it be so. I'm telling Bill not to cut about it. May it be so, and that's the end of the sermon piece. We had hoped that we could intersperse some music. Hopefully, if this has all worked out right by the end of the day, you'll have a little bit of music at the beginning and the very end of, of the recorded service, but we don't have it right now. I do want to let folks know that during this period, we are going to try and communicate way more often than we usually do. Hopefully, you're getting the emails. Hopefully, you're getting the letters. The one we will try to get a special announcement version of the broadsheet and UU Life out early this week. But I specifically want to note that the social action group in Chestertown has volunteer opportunities. And if you're interested, contact Philip Dutton. We've got all the information, um, and that will go out at the beginning of the week. But feel free to contact him right away. Um, similarly, in Easton, feel free to contact me. The um, Talbot Family Networks also has a comprehensive list of where they need help, and I'll be happy to let you know where some of those areas are. So that's our announcements for today, and as we proceed with virtual services, we will experiment a little more. I offer now our closing words. These are words from the Reverend Dr. Wayne Arneson, words that are familiar to many of us. Take courage, friends. The way is often hard. The path is never clear. And the stakes are very high. Take courage, for deep down there is another truth. You are not alone. Go in peace. Go in love. Go knowing love surrounds you wherever you may go. We extinguish the chalice with these words. 
We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we meet again. For this week, goodbye, my friends.